So um, you wanted to mention some alternative housing schemes that are being set up in your area. Tell us about them. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's, you know, we've got a housing crisis and, and we all know that. So actually up and down the country, ordinary people are saying we're going to take control of this. And they're just setting up housing schemes. They're building generally affordable housing uh, for local people who can't get housing other ways through community land trusts or co-housing schemes. Um, and I've been working with one where I am in Leeds. Um, they want to build 38 affordable houses uh, in an area on a bit of land where no one else will build. But of course, it costs money. Now, there used to be a government fund that no longer exists. So we're trying to use crowdfunding. And increasingly, communities up and down the country are doing that. They're using community shares or crowdfunding as a way to raise money to have affordable housing that will stay for local people and be affordable forever. So it's really exciting. Next week, I'm going to do an event with an academic about a new book on how to save the city. So there's loads of really interesting discussions going on about different ways that we could sort out the housing crisis that's putting people right at the heart of it rather than relying on the big volume um, house builders but I we need people to invest it sounds great i'm just the my immediate thought is that what, what happens often when houses are sold at a discount is that speculators get in for the second purchase so somebody goes in and they buy a brilliant house for a hundred thousand then someone comes and says i'll give you half a million for it and suddenly you're back where you started well, not if you've got these schemes, because um, particularly community land trusts, it's in their, their legal setup that for perpetuity that that can't happen. So when someone moves out of it, it has to go to somebody else at an affordable local... rent or at a reduced uh, Anne is, cost. Anne That's is the best bit. And is pulling a face here. Yes, what do you I am think? I am pulling a slight face because what that implies is, and I may have got it wrong, what that implies is that a person buys one of these houses um, and then can't make a profit out of the house. But that person, to get on the ladder uh, and to move on, uh, actually will need funds to do that. So I can't see that that's such... It's, it's a bit like saying to people, you know, here is your council house and you've got to stay in it. And if you move out of it, well, that's your tough luck. I mean, I... You know, Sorry, Peg, we weren't that. trying... I wasn't trying to explode the whole idea. We're but... really happy to have this discussion, actually, because <laughs> actually, at the heart of this... Yeah. Is the idea that houses are for homes, not for profit, so quite a different yeah, but, basis. But yeah. if you want to move on, supposing you have a family, for example, you buy a small home, you have a family, you want to move on. Now, you know, you're not just talking about vulgar profit, you're talking about enabling yourself to do that. And most people do that uh, through selling... Uh, the first property they moved into. All right, they, they we're, we're on a score draw here. I don't think I don't think we're going to see. In the end, Peg has a different view of what a house is. It's it's not. Oh, a it's vehicle. a home. It's no, not a vehicle for investment.